Hello, welcome back to this week's market update. Today is Monday, July 15th, 2024. We had a very eventful week last week and an unfortunately eventful weekend. So we'll get into that and how that affects the market and how the market is digesting that on Monday here. Unfortunately, there was a security breach within one of Trump's rallies over the weekend, and there was a attempted assassination of the former president. Very big deal here. Anytime that there is such a security breach, such a attempt on a former president, no matter what political party you are, that definitely has the capability to shake up the market a little bit. As we look at markets, we look through the lenses of interest rates, inflation, geopolitical events, the Fed or earnings and many other factors as we assess the market and unfortunately geopolitical events which do tend to be political in nature do shake up markets sometimes so just taking a quick check in on the markets Monday morning here you can see the Dow the S&P the Nasdaq and the Russell 2000 were all positive as of about two o'clock on Monday, as well as the VIX was up about 5.7% on the day. Now this VIX around 13 is a little bit of a jump of where we were in the last few days, but this is not a very severe jump in volatility like we saw in COVID, like you saw during the financial crisis. It was nothing that severe that shocked the whole system. So although it was a very unfortunate event, we are praying and thinking about the victims, both the former president and just the nation. It did not get a huge reaction in the market as of Monday around 2 p.m. So we'll continue to monitor that, monitor the situation, but just wanted to provide a brief update as we did update you yesterday. Last week, the CPI data came in much better than expected, eventually leading stocks higher for the week. But as you can see here, we saw the Nasdaq composite. This was the close on Wednesday, and then this was the close on Thursday. So it was a big drop in performance in those large cap tech names following the CPI print, but ultimately stocks did lead the week higher with the Dow leading up 1.59% on the week, the S&P 500 up 0.87% on the week, the Nasdaq up just a quarter of a percent, and then in fixed income, the Barclays Aggregate Bond Index up 0.83% as of last week. Consumer prices fell in the month of June, with the monthly inflation rate dropping to actually negative 0.1% month over month, while headline CPI came down to 3%. So you can see that is quite a moderate rate in the inflation rate, actually the lowest since June of 2023, so quite a while since we've seen that low of annual inflation. And then on core inflation, we saw that fall to 3.3% year over year. And that was a small increase of 0.1% from the month of May to June. Very interesting reaction in stocks on Thursday following this news. As I just said, large cap technology names that had been leading this recent leg of the market rally, they declined on the day while small cap and value focused stocks saw a stronger day of performance. So very interesting reaction to this CPI news. Then we'll just take a quick look at what were some of the drivers behind this month's CPI print. Breaking down this June CPI a little bit further that led to this 3% headline figure here, we saw food inflation only up 2.2% from a year ago, which was primarily driven by restaurant inflation that was up 4.1% from a year ago, while the cost of groceries on average in the CPI print is only up 1.1% from a year ago. So good news at the grocery store, the rate of inflation is slowing, although prices are still high. Then when we look at energy, that was up 1% as a category from a year ago, with gasoline costs dropping from a year ago, but electricity as well as gas utilities up quite a bit, about 37 to 4.4% from June of 2023. Then moving on here, we saw the price of new vehicles down almost a full percent from a year ago. So starting to be a better time to buy a car unless you're financing it at higher rates. We also saw the price of used vehicles actually down 10.1 percent from a year ago. So that's quite a drop there. We saw shelter up 5.2 percent from a year ago. So it is seeing a cooler inflation rate, although 5.2 percent inflation in any good, especially the good that is the largest chunk of consumers wallet oftentimes, that 5.2% inflation rate is really keeping this CPI elevated. Without that, it would probably be quite a bit lower. 
And then last but not least, we saw transportation services still continue to see quite high inflation compared to a year ago as the cost of repairs as well as the cost of auto insurance remain very high. So overall, really interesting CPI print came in lower than expected, and that boosted markets last week. Following the June CPI on Thursday, we also got the PPI or the producer price index, which shows us how costs are changing to producers, which often flow down to consumers through the CPI months later. We saw the producer price index come in slightly higher than expected at 2.6% in the month of June, while core PPI came in at 3.1%. You can see the rate of increase has been slowly moving up since last fall. That's not a great sign, although 2.6% inflation, again, is still nothing to be overly concerned about because we are seeing the CPI even higher, and 2.6% is quite close to the Fed's 2% target. Looking by category, the final demand goods category actually fell 0.5%. So the cost of goods to producers overall fell half a percent in the month of June, while the cost of services rose 0.6% in the month of June. That ultimately led to a monthly inflation rate of 0.2%, so quite moderate there, and core inflation at 0%. The market largely overlooked this hotter than expected data on Friday as they focused on the CPI, and these numbers are not too bad, even if they were slightly hotter than expected. So really important stuff here. Good progress in the month of June on inflation, and we will get the PCE reading later on this month. The University of Michigan's Consumer Sentiment Index came in below expectations for July, posting down at 66 here for the month, and that was down from June's slightly higher reading at 68.2. Respondents to the survey cited concerns over the upcoming election, as well as uncertainty around the U.S. economy overall. We also saw that year ahead inflation expectations actually fell for the second consecutive month, reaching at 2.9%. So consumers are starting to see inflation come down and lowering their expectations of inflation ahead. But despite being lower, this expectation still remains a bit above the pre-pandemic norms of about 2.2 to 2.6% inflation that we saw in the few years before the pandemic. Overall, we do see just, you know, this drop off in consumer sentiment since really the start of the year, it's been trending down despite being a lot higher than it was in 2022. Really important just to be aware of, despite the market being at all-time highs, consumer sentiment is dropping. So just an interesting trend as we assess markets, as we assess the economy and where we may be heading. Last but not least, we got the Employment Trends Index for the month of June, showing a slight drop in the month, down from a downwardly revised number in May as well. So that's been moving down really since 2021 or so when we had abnormal gains in the labor market due to the undoing of the COVID pandemic layoffs and reshifting and moving around of the labor market. That's been in a slight downtrend, although the indicator does remain positive overall. You can see it's still quite higher than it was the few years before the pandemic, but really until it reaches below this 80, maybe even 90 level here, the index is still positive. So we'll take a look at our recession indicators in the next slide. As I said, we did see a downtick in the employment trends index, but it is still positive. So you see that reflected in our dashboard here, still bullish, although it has been trending down. And some economists say that that may signal some trouble ahead. So overall, you can see this remained bullish last week as well. The ADS index and most of our indicators are quite mixed with some being bullish, but the ISMs being bearish. That's pretty notable there. We'll have to see if that trend continues. That might be a warning sign ahead, but for now, very mixed to neutral dashboard that we're seeing in these recession indicators. Might be some trouble ahead or might not be, so we'll continue to watch and monitor and adjust the portfolios accordingly. Thank you so much for tuning in to our market update this week. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you next week.